Hi, we've been looking into the book of Nehemiah and you remember that Nehemiah was a man who loved God above everything else and wanted God's name to be honoured again. And so we got a load of people together who lived in and near the city of Jerusalem to start rebuilding the walls and repairing the gates that had been trashed by the big Babylonian army. He had a really good look at the walls and gates to see what needed doing and then he got all those people together including those who would normally make things like gold rings or perfumes and even the important priests to start shifting rocks around and repairing gates. It was a massive, massive job and it would have been really hard work to do all of that work uh, in the hot sun. Now I guess if this was a fairy story, then what would happen is uh, they would all work hard and they'd get the job done and they would all live happily ever after. But this isn't a fairy story. This is the real world. And here in the real world, whenever God's people work to serve the Lord God and bring honour to his name, there are other people who don't like it. And in fact, there's one person who hates it and will do anything he can to use other people to cause as many problems as possible. And that person is Satan. And he hates above all when God's name is honoured and when people put their trust in the Lord God. And so it's not surprising that Nehemiah comes across a couple of guys who do their best to stop the rebuilding of the walls. And their names were Sanballat and Tobiah. And Satan was using both of them to do his work. Sanballat and Tobiah were important, powerful politicians who were selfishly interested in becoming even more important and even more powerful. They were interested in themselves, not in bringing any honour to God. So the last thing they wanted was for God to rebuild the people of Israel, starting with the walls of Jerusalem. At first, they were irritated that Nehemiah was back in town, but it wasn't long before being irritated changed to being seriously angry. And they did two big things to try and stop the people from bringing honour to God. The first was that they laughed at them. Look at what Sam Ballot said. <laughs> what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? And Tobiah said this. <laughs> what they're building? <laughs> Even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Can you see what they're trying to do? They're trying to get God's people to think that what they're doing is pointless and a waste of time. Ha! You're useless! You're on the wrong side, you losers! And the second thing they did was to plan to force them to stop by hurting or killing them. You see, Sambala and Tobiah reckoned that what Nehemiah and the others were doing was dangerous and so they needed to be forced to stop. And if that involved hurting or killing some of them, well, so be it. And you know, Satan still wants to stop people trusting in God and still wants to stop God from building his church. And he loves to get people laughing at Christians. Ha! <laughs> you are so out of date! Are you stupid to still believe all that stuff? And look at your churches, <laughs> small and weak and pathetic. Ah, <laughs> you losers. Do you get that at school or college or at work or in what you read in the news or on social media? And then sometimes Satan still tries to force God's people to stop what they're doing. Maybe through politicians making laws that go completely against the Bible. Or when Christians are forced out of their jobs because they're Christians who take the Bible seriously. And in some countries, Christians are arrested and, and put in prison and beaten up or worse, just because they're Christians. Satan is still doing the same things that he was back in Nehemiah's time. 
And it would have been really easy, wouldn't it, for Nehemiah and the people to just give up. Ah, maybe they're right. Maybe we are just losers. Maybe what we believe is dangerous. Let's just, let's just stop the work. Well, here are three great things that Nehemiah did instead of giving up. And they're a really good example to us. It won't surprise you that the first thing he did was he prayed and he asked God to stop what Sam Ballot and Tobiah were doing. Because after all, only God is totally sinless and holy and can do that in a way which is totally just and totally fair. Here's one of his prayers. Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. And then Nehemiah trusted God and did what he could. And he did some very wise things. He made sure that some of the people guarded the bits of the wall that were still full of holes. He instructed half of the builders to carry swords and look out for attackers while the other half worked. He told them to come and help out if the enemies attacked the people who were working on another bit of the wall. And then he reminded them that God is bigger and stronger than their enemies. God is in control. God does know what he's doing. Look at this. Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. Fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. So once again, Nehemiah is a great example to us for when Satan attacks us, either when people laugh at us or when they plan to force us to stop our work for the Lord God. We may at the moment not need to stand guard against people attacking us, but let's follow Nehemiah's example of praying for God's protection, of being wise as we work for God's honour, and to remember that God has already defeated Satan at the cross and is in control. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are attacked for being Christians. Protect them and strengthen them to keep serving you. And Father, give us your wisdom as we work for your honour. Thank you that you are in control and we can trust you. In Jesus' name, Amen.